Hey what's up guys, my name is Brad, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another Duel Links video, welcome back to another Duel Links box review. Today, Konami decided to drop Tornado of Phantoms on us, it's coming out on the 25th in UK, so I think it's going to be at like midnight or 1am, so it'll be the 24th for you American people, which means the same day that you get Jack, is the same day you get a brand new mini box. And this box to me has some recoil really cool cards in it, I don't think it's going to be entirely uh, worthwhile going into... Uh, with all of your gems, I think there'll probably be better sets down the line. But there's some cool things in here, and I think overall the set has uh, some cool cards. But again, it, it is a very uh, half-assed set. I think that's how I'd kind of describe it. I'll talk about that more as we go into the review of this box. So without further ado, let's get into it. But before that, a big thank you to my brand new YouTube channel member, Arona Fox, for being a channel member. If you want to help support the channel, it's January, of course, and that means that, you know... Every YouTuber needs help, as much help as they could possibly can do. Links are down below, you can click the join button on screen right now to help support the channel. And uh, yeah, let's get into the box. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and talk through the URs and SRs and a couple of the rares and normals that I think are worthwhile mentioning because there's a lot to like in this set and a lot to kind of dislike. There's a lot of Moki Moki support that I don't think you really need to talk about. But still, let's get in with the first card. Elemental Hero, Great Tornado, we finally have a decent... Wind Fusion Monster, that the generic ones like um, Nova Master and Gaia, we have Great Tornado. Requires 1 E Hero plus 1 Wind, 2000 Attack, 2000 Defense, must be Fusion Summoned, cannot be Special Summoned by other ways. If this card is Fusion Summoned, half the attack and defense of all face and monster opponent controls. I think personally, this is the best one we have so far. Just because of the fact that Gaia, it, Gaia is the one that does the half attack and then Gaia gains that attack. But Great Tornado does it to every single multi player controls, and it's a permanent attack reduction, not just for that turn. So even if you can't fully take advantage of Great Tornado's effect of all that attack reduction that turn, you still have your opponent's monsters weakened, which means it's harder for them to come back with on their next turn. The only downside to Great Tornado is that it requires a Wind Monster, and we don't really have, in Duel Links, to my knowledge, that great of a Wind Monster lineup for cards you could splash in E-Heroes, of course, we have got uh, Mr. Valley uh, Soldier in this set, which isn't a hero card, which could work very nicely with this card, but we don't have things like Stratos, which would have really made this card a lot better, but still, I hope someone is able to find a way to make this card really good, because uh, it's a fun card, and I definitely, definitely want to see uh, this card see some play. Next, we have Mecha Phantom Beast Tether Wolf. They are back. I'm probably not going to build this deck, purely because I don't have any of the um, the other ultra rare one, the one that summons like two tokens I think it is. But uh, Tether Wolf is pretty similar, when this card is normal summon, special summon one Mega Phantom Beast token onto your side of the field. Of course it has the uh, can't be destroyed by battle or card effect while there, uh, there's a token on board. During the damage step you contribute one token to have him gain 800 attack points, which puts him up to a nice 2500, and it's during either player's turn, which is really, really nice, because that means it gets over uh, all the Dark Magician stuff we just recently got, it gets over most Synchros, obviously things like Junk Destroy, it's not going to get over, but it'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with things like Stardust Dragon, which is really nice, uh, Vampires, it pretty much comes neck and neck with those as well, uh, Quacky Mirrors, of course, it's, everything kind of uh, fails against Quacky Mirrors, but Still, Mega Phantom Beast, I think, could be a nice uh, tier 2-ish deck around then. They have some really cool support in this box, and I'm looking forward to seeing what people do with them, but I personally probably won't be playing with them, I don't think. I don't like the playstyle, honestly. That's really why I'm not going to be playing them. Next, we have Pilica, Descendant of Gusto. So we are getting a whole wave of Gusto support in this set. Level 3, Wind, 1000 Attack, 1500 Defense. When this card is normal Special Summon, you could Tiger 1 Wind Tuner in your graveyard. Special Summon in face up Defense position. Its effects are negated. If you activate this effect, you cannot special summon monsters for this turn, except for wind monsters, and it's a hard once per turn effect. This is just great, because immediately, that's giving you access to a Gusto Synchro Monster, or an even better Synchro Monster, and it's just in one card. So, there, with this Gusto deck, you're going to see that the deck now, with the support in this box, makes it very easy to search through the deck and get things out uh, that you need to get your combo pieces out to Synchro Summon. Again, Duel Links not having main phase 2 does mean that Gustos are kind of severely limited in that regard because a lot of their, uh, a lot of the summoning conditions of 
these later Gusto cards actually do require them to be destroyed by battle or by card effect, so it's kind of unfair that they get hit because of uh, the properties of Duel Links' uh, playstyle, but still Pilka is a pretty cool card. Like, I, I'm, I'm interested more so to play Gustos than anything else in this box. Next we have Stardust Assault Warrior, of course Yusei used this as an AI card. We got this in the Megatins this year. Level 6 Wind, it's generic as well, 2100, 1200. When this kind of synchro summoned while you control no other monsters, you can target a junk in your graveyard and special summon it. It's a hard once per turn and it does piercing bow damage. Just means that it's going to be very easy for you to say, synchro summon this guy out, bring back another junk synchron, and then you kind of have ways to go either into another synchro monster, you have a way to special summon a card from your hand, or potentially go into a level 9 synchro where you're using, you know, using junk synchron and stop the assault warrior. This will probably see a bit of play in uh, in synchro decks, like just in, 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 oh, in, a, in a junk deck definitely, just because it offers up so many optimal combos, and once we get future support like junk speed, I think Assault Warrior, you'll see this card played quite a bit, because it definitely allows you to go in uh, and just kind of like synchro chain. I think you kind of call it that. Next we have Mist Worm. So I'm very happy about this. This is in uh, Dual Terminal and Hidden Arsenal 1, I think it was. This is really good. So one should was two more non-shooting monsters, say level 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I think it is. 10 levels, so pretty beefy. 2500 attack, 1500 defense, so not the best stat line in the world, but again, it's kind of coming toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of other synchro monsters we have. If this card is synchro summoned, target up to three cards, point controls, and return those targets to the hand. It's a compulsory evacuation device on steroids. It's really freaking good. One of the best cards in this box. It is a little bit hard to bring out, but I think with the way Dunks is going and we're seeing more monsters be able to special, be special summoned and be searchable, this would be pretty nice. So I might actually, let me just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, no. Actually, it's a level nine, which means you can use Stardust Assault Warrior to climb into this by bringing back Junk Synchron. Okay, this this card, yeah, yeah that's that's good. That that's great. Then we have Psychic Nightmare, the worst synchro I think we're getting of uh, the SRs, honestly. It's okay stat lines. Once per turn during your main phase, you can pick one random card in your opponent's hand and call what type it is. If you get it right, you gain a thousand attack until the end of your opponent's end phase. Obviously, the attack point increase is really good because it becomes 3400 for like two turns, which is insane. But it's still reliant on luck and it requires psychic type non tuners to summon. Obviously, you wouldn't be running it outside of a psychic deck, but still. To me, it's not that great. It's one of the weaker cards in this set, to be honest. Rainbow Overdragon, another one of the weaker cards in this set. One that could be so cool and fun to play with, just gets hindered by the fact we don't have support like Ultimate Crystal Magic in Duel Links. Requires seven Crystal Beast monsters to summon it, or can be special summoned by tributing one level 10 Ultimate Crystal monster, which basically means Rainbow Dragon or Rainbow Dark Dragon. So basically Rainbow Dragon, because that's the only one we've got in Duel Links. However, it doesn't get the really good effect it has if it's been summoned by that Rainbow Dragon effect. So once per turn you can banish a Crystal Beast monster in your graveyard to have it gain attack equal to it. So, you know, get banish a Sapphire Pegasus, it becomes 58. So it's getting a bit stronger, but if it's fusion summoned, you contribute it to shuffle all cards on the field into the deck. It doesn't get that effect if it's been summoned by the effect of tributing Rainbow Dragon, which is really disappointing because I think that's going to be the easier way to summon this card in Duel Links. Otherwise, Future Fusion is going to be your go-to card to really get this guy out. And so it's kind of weird. Like, for all the stats set up to get this boy out that has no protection, that has not the best effect in the world, it it's just it's kind of a shame there's no easy way to get Over Dragon out right now. Mecha Phantom Beast Blue Impala. Big shout out to Dean and Sam Winchester for your iconic vehicle now in plane form, I guess. Level 3 Wind Machine Tuner, this guy is really good. Now, I didn't know Mecha Phantom Beast had all the support and all these synchro monsters. I thought they were just a pretty generic um, rank 4 engine for Xyz, but apparently not. Cannot be used as a synchro material monster except for the synchro summon of a machine monster. The other synchro material monsters are Mecha Phantom Beast monsters who are in your hand or on your side of the field. So, just allowing you to sit there and turn one go. I play Blue Impala, I play my 
level 4 in my hand, level 7 machine synchro, on board straight away, is really freaking good. Then if it's in the graveyard, you can banish itself to actually bring out a token to the field, and then use that for future synchro summons and stuff. So like, it has a lot of recursion in itself, it's got a lot of utility, it's one of the better- I, I think this deserves to be a UR to be fair. Rather than SI, I think it's going to be a very integral part of that synchro strategy with that deck. And hopefully we get some better machine monsters, because we have some machine and Mega Fans of Beast Synchros in, in the game in this box, but I don't think they're the epitome of what can be used with this card. Then we have Gusto Eagle, a level 1 tuner. When it's card's draw a balance into the graveyard, you can special summon one level 4 or lower non-tuner Gusto monster from your deck. This gets you out! Some really cool things. It can get you out that level um, level three. You are Pilika. It can get you out this girl Pilika from the deck when it's destroyed, and then Pilika when she's normal summoned, you can get a tuner out. So obviously, again, it, it it's a shame that Dorings doesn't have a, a main phase two to really um, take advantage of Gusto's in your turn. But if you know if if that Gusto level two tune, level one tuner is the last thing it destroyed, it was destroyed during your opponent's turn, then you immediately have your next turn play set up with these Gusto cards, so that's really interesting. And then let's go back to Gusto Eagle. It's pretty cool. It's, it's a, it, I'm looking forward to playing with Gustos now because I was I was disappointed when we didn't get too much support in the first box. Now I can see why. They are some cool shit. Then we have Mr. Valley Soldier. I talked about him a little bit earlier. Uh, Wing Beast Tuner, 70 attack, 300 defense, level four. So that's our first good level four tuner, I think. Which is kind of crazy because now it means that you can go into things like Stars Dragon very, very easily. And uh, if you're running like a Dynatherium Synchro build, you can obviously special some Dynatherium, some Miss Valley Soldier. There's your level 8 on board for free very easily. If you have a uh, Junk Forward, special Junk Forward, some Valley Soldier, there's your level 7 for free very easily. So you can have a lot of utility. While you control this face up card, any opponent's monster that battles this card but is not destroyed by battle returns to the owner's hand at the end of the damage step. I don't know. How useful this is going to be, obviously this this would be a insane counter for Glad Beasts, because obviously they run the Impenetrable Attack card, but I don't know right now exactly how good this is going to be, because I can't see too many use cases for that part of its effect, other than just being a level 4 generic tuner. Then we have Hushed Psychic Cleric. Zero attack, 200 defense, so a big, thick boy. Uh, if this card is normal, it's flip summoned, change it to defense position, so immediately goes to defense, 2100 defense, really nice. Once per turn, you can send one card from your hands to the graveyard to target one psychic monster in your graveyard. Banish that target. Of course, psychics like being banished. That's always a good thing. Though you are dropping a card from your hands to the graveyard, which is uh, that might be a good thing actually. I'm not too sure. I I'm really not too sure with psychics. I'm not. I can't like recall every psychic support we have off the top of my hand. Then we have. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you could target one monster that was banished by this card's effect and special summon it. So if you can make sure you banish a really powerful psychic in the graveyard then you can get that guy out when it's destroyed. So, uh, really, actually a really nice bit of support. That's it's probably one of the better cards, I think, in this in this in an actual box. Then we have Mana Dragon Xenotron. This was teched into some Dark Magician decks in TCG when it came out in Cybernetic Horizon. I've used it a little bit. It's a very interesting card. I don't know right now how well it will do in Duel Links, but it's still really cool. If a Spell Trap card you control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect, and is now in the graveyard or banished, except during damage step. You can switch on this card from your graveyard or from your hand, depending on whether it was there when a spell trap was activated or not. So, if your opponent Cosmic Cyclone is one of your cards, you get a big boy out to your field. That's not all that's really good about him, though. When it's on back, you can then set one banished spell trap card or card in your graveyard to your side of the field. So you just get that trap back, or that spell back, or anything you've already used back. That's really cool. It might not be the most meta defining card, but it's we're getting to that point where we're getting uh, a lot of uh, not hand traps, but like cards that activate in the hand or the graveyard that can actually have good utility. And Dawnlink is finally becoming a little bit closer to the current TCG game state, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, but. Still pretty interesting. Then we have Trap Stun, probably my favorite card from this set. Honestly, this is great. It was seen a lot of play in the TCG. Negate all of the trap card effects on the field this turn. Big shouts to Konami for including Imperial Order in the thumbnail or in the thumbnail in the card art because thank God that's not in Duel Links because that would be broken. 
But that is it. That is all of the Super Rares and Ultra Rares. We've gone through all of them. The box set itself seems really interesting. Of course, we have like the Mecha Phantom Beast uh, Rares and Normals, the Synchros. Uh, this one I like. I like the Digusto Synchro. Uh, once per turn, you can shovel two Digusto monsters from your graveyard into the main deck to tie one face of monster and controls and destroy a target. It's not too bad. It's adding some recursion. Of course, the Gusto deck can search things out very easily, so it's not really a loss. Mistbird Crossless is another Synchro I really like just for being able to be a Synchro Climb card. Once per turn, you could target one face of monster and controls. Its attack becomes zero, and if it does, its effects negated. So, whilst it does a zero attack, if you can Synchro summon this card out, Either you just put it in defense, have this nice big wall, or you synchro this card out, you special summon a tuner, and then you end up going into another bigger synchro, and you have that zero attack point reduction on your opponent's monster to allow you to potentially go for an OTK, or for just dealing a ton of damage that turn, so Crossless I think is also another underrated card, but could be really cool, and of course we have more Mecha Phantom Beast cards, Gusto Goldo, when it's kind of in the field to the graveyard, you can special summon one level 2 or lower Gusto monster from your deck, that lets you go immediately for Winder, big shout out to V-Blade for this, I know that this is Wi-Fi, I think it is, Winder Priest of Gusto level 2, when it's kind of destroyed by balance with the post attack monster into the graveyard, special one Gusto Tuna monster from your deck, so basically, gets you out Goldo, all that level 1, and then those keep on recurring each other, so, it's a really interesting strategy the Gustos have, I think, I don't think like, they're going to be entirely great, but I think they're going to be a really fun deck to, to play with. Symphonic Warriors, they're missing their two best cards, uh, which are the Pendulum ones, which is Guitar and Mics, I think it is. So they're missing those, which is kind of unfortunate, but obviously that whole mechanic isn't in Duel Links yet. We're getting Skyscraper 2, which is a really cool card, just because of the fact that you can target any hero that was drawn by battle at any point during the duel, any turns before this was activated, which is a really nice card effect to have. But again, it's not searchable by Captain Gold, so it's kind of disappointing in that regard. Token Sunday for the Mecha Fantasy shenanigans, and that's really it. Like, there's some other cool cards in here, like Revenge of the Normal, I think, could be a nice little underrated card. Just being able to special summon little 4 level monsters, and the fact you can do Mushroom Man, Little D, Moki Moki, Gigabyte Turbo could be really fun, tilty strategy. We're getting some cool stuff, but that is going to be me done for this box. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments down below, of course. Apologies that this was kind of a rushed video, uh, but I want to give my thoughts out on some of these cards as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next Duel Links video, which will be tomorrow for the Jack event, because that's finally coming. See you then.